The Lelantine War is the modern name for a military conflict between the two ancient Greek city-states Chalcis and Eritrea in Euboea which took place in the early Archaic period, between c. 710 and 650 BC. The reason for war was, according to tradition, the struggle for the fertile Lelantine plain on the island of Euboea. Due to the economic importance of the two participating polis, the conflict spread considerably, with many further city-states joining either side, resulting in much of Greece being at war. The historian Thucydides describes the Lelantine War as exceptional, the only war in Greece between the mythical Trojan War and the Persian Wars of the early 5th century BC in which allied cities rather than single ones were involved. Ancient authors normally refer to the war between Chalcidians and Eritreans. The war between Chalcis and Eritrea was the one in which most cities belonging to the rest of Greece were divided up into alliances with one side or the other, Thucydides' date of the war. We have no direct information in ancient sources to date this war. Indirect evidence in Thucydides points towards a date California 705 BC that situates it halfway between history and legend. At the very same time, the site of Lefkandi was being incrementally deserted, perhaps as a consequence of the turmoil. The foundation stories of the joint Euboean colony at Ischia suggest that at the mid-8th century Chalcis and Eritrea were cooperating. Furthermore, Theognis can be read to imply there was a conflict between Eritrea and Chalcis in the middle of the 6th century BC. While a few historians have suggested this as the date of the Lelantine War, it is more probable that Theognis refers to a second smaller and even less known Lelantine War. We are certainly not dealing with a hundred years Lelantine War, remarks Robin Lane Fox. Background. Chalcis and Eritrea reports on the west coast of Euboea. Both cities claimed the Lelantine Plain, perhaps originally made fertile by the river Lelas, which traverses the plain from north to south as a natural border, although, strictly speaking, Eritrea is located outside the plain, it had a historical claim to it. The reason is that Eritrea was probably initially the port for a mother town situated further west. That town was located at the mouth of the Lelas, near modern Lefkandi. Its ancient name is unknown, so it is generally called by that of the modern settlement. Lefkandi suffered heavy destructions in c. 825 BC, after which the majority of its population probably moved to Eritrea. Eritrea and Chalcis originally had a political union with Athens as they were all of the Ionian tribe. Evidence of this is that the two Ionian seats in the Delphic Amphictyony were given to Athens and the Ionians of Euboea, Chalcis and Eritrea. The two soon turned towards the nearby Cyclades Islands and to locations further abroad for expansion and trade. In the 8th century BC, Euboea was one of the economically strongest regions of Greece. The two leading powers of the island, Chalcis and Eritrea were among the driving forces behind the Apoikiri of the Mediterranean, acting for a long time not as competitors but as collaborators. Around the mid-8th century, they jointly founded Almina, a colony conceived to facilitate trade with the eastern Mediterranean. Roughly at the same time, they expanded westwards. Together with Kerkera, Corfu, Eritrea secured access to the western Mediterranean. Since the second quarter of the 8th century, Euboean traders were present on the island of Pithecuse off the coast of Campania to conduct trade with the Etruscans. A few decades later, Cumi, the first Greek colony on the Italian mainland was founded. Around 735 BC, Chalcis founded the first Greek colony in Sicily, a point which Thucydides saw as the true start of Greek colonization. Shortly thereafter, Region and Zankel were founded on either side of the strategically important Straits of Messina. Reason for war According to tradition, the war was caused by a conflict about the Lelantine Plain. This very fertile area had for a long time been used for agriculture, including the cultivation of vines. 
In Greece, where fertile land is scarce, wards for agriculturally attractive terrain were not uncommon, especially in the Archaic period, e.g., between Megara and Athens. Nevertheless, it remains unclear why Chalcis and Eritrea suddenly came to blows over the Lelantine Plain after apparently being in agreement on its use for a long time. The origin of the conflict could be connected to a natural disaster. At the end of the 8th century BC, Attica, Euboea and other nearby islands suffered from a severe drought. It is likely that the Eritrean establishment on Andros was abandoned as a result. This drought and the attendant famine could have led to both Chalcis and Eritrea laying claim on all of the Lelantine Plain. Course of the war The war between Chalcis and Eritrea probably began around 710 BC. Although both cities must have possessed large fleets, it was waged on land. Since the war took place before the development or introduction of hoplite warfare, but under exclusion of bows and slingshots, most of the combatants were probably lightly armed swordsmen. According to another view, the war consisted mainly of cavalry engagements. The relevant lines by Archilochus indicate that the war was still ongoing through the poet's lifetime. It is possible, and likely, that the conflict was subdivided in several phases of warfare and ceasefires, as were e.g. the Peloponnesian War and the Messenian Wars. Disambiguation needed. Troops Eritrea at its height could field 3,000 hoplites, 600 cavalry and 60 chariots. This implies that this conflict took place at the transitional time between the Homeric Aristos, entering the war on chariot and fighting his enemies like the heroes of the Iliad, and the classical hoplite. The size and numbers of Chalcis's forces are unknown. We only know that their infantry was superior and their cavalry inferior to that of Eritrea. Alliances and extent primarily, the war would have involved the two conflicting cities and their territories. At the time of the war, the state of Eritrea included one quarter of the island of Euboea as well as the nearby Cyclades. The expansion of the conflict into other regions and the number of allies are disputed. There are direct references to three further participants apart from Chalcis and Eritrea, Miletus on the side of Eritrea and Samos as well as Thessaly on that of Chalcis. Beyond these, the enmities and alliances between archaic Greek states known from other sources have led to further suggestions of parties involved, leading some scholars to propose up to 40 participants. Such numbers would, however, imply broad-ranging political alliance systems, which the majority of scholars do not consider likely for the 8th century BC. Even if many other cities were involved in warfare at the same time, it cannot, however, be argued that every conflict between Greek states of the time was part of this war. Thus, most scholars assume that, apart from the cities mentioned above, only Aegina, Corinth and Megara, and perhaps also Chios and Erythrae took part. The island state of Vagina was mainly active in the trade with Egypt, where its major competitor was Samos. Samos was allied with Chalcis, which suggests that Aegina took the side of Eritrea. Corinth and Megara were at war for practically all of the Archaic period, primarily because of the Corinthian conquest of the Perachora Peninsula which had originally belonged to Megara. The actions of Chalcis and Corinth in the context of Western colonization suggest that the two cities were allied or at least friendly, Chalcis had prevented Megarian settlers from establishing themselves at Leontinoi, while Corinth had driven Eritrean settlers from Kirkara. In analogy, a friendship between Megara and Eritrea is assumed. Herodotus reports that Shio supported Miletus in the Ionian Revolt, because Miletus had previously assisted the Chiotes against Erythrae. Thus, based on the allegiance of Miletus, an alliance between Chios and Eritrea, as well as one between Erythrae and Chalcis can be suggested. Most current scholarship is of the opinion that such long-distance alliances cannot have existed in the 8th century BC. Instead, there may have been alliance-like based on personal relationships among the nobility, so that the struggle involved only Eritrea. 
Chalcis and the Thessalian aristocrat Cleomachos of Pharsa lost with his own troops. The German historian Detlev Failing believes that the entire Lelantine War is an invention of later centuries, produced by a chain of pseudo -Nacrichton. This opinion has been generally rejected. Around 700 BC, the Eritrean mother town at Lefkandi was finally destroyed, probably by Chalcis. This cut Eritrea's link with the Lelantine Plain. At about the same time Eritrea's ally Miletus ravaged the southern Nubian town of Karistos. During this phase, Miletus rose to be the dominant power in the eastern Aegean. The war lasted until the mid-7th century BC. It may have been concluded, in favor of Chalcis, by the intervention of a Thessalian cavalry army, led by Cleo Marchos of Pharsalos although it is not entirely clear whether the event in question decided the war, or indeed whether Chalcis definitely won it. Effects After the Long War Euboea, once the leading region of Greece, had become a backwater, the defeated Eritrea and the probable victor Chalcis had lost their former economic and political importance. On the Mediterranean markets, Corinthian vase painting had taken over the dominant role previously occupied by Euboean pottery. The leading role in colonization was taken over by the polis of Asia Minor, such as Miletus and Phocaiar. Chalcis entered a long decline while the islands in the Cyclades that Eritrea controlled earlier seemed to have become independent. From Theognis, another conflict over the Lelantine field is implied in the 6th century, so it seems the two cities fought again. In any case, after the war both cities continued the colonization of the Chalcidice Peninsula in northern Greece. Eritrea felt compelled by the help Miletus had given her during the war to repay its debt by assisting Miletus during the Ionian Revolt. This led to Eritrea's destruction prior to the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC. Chalcis retained control of the Lelantine Plain until 506 BC, when Athens established a Clarucci in it.